Hello and welcome to today's presentation on adding and subtracting integers. Uh, we'll call these, let's call these rational numbers because the, the rule will always apply for all rational numbers and integers are uh, a subset of rational numbers. Rational numbers are just numbers that can be written as fractions on the number line. Okay, so today we're going to talk about adding and subtracting uh, positive and negative numbers. We're going to talk about this again because, you know, it really uh, is a basic thing and it's not as complicated as many people think. Uh, if you use the number line, the number line is an extremely important mathematical tool that I feel is underused a lot in mathematics, uh, but is really, really helpful to help you to understand this particular concept and a significant amount of concepts uh, in mathematics as well. So we're going to talk about this from an intuitive level uh, so you understand the concept, so you understand what directions are actually being given, and really it's just understanding the actual directions that you're being asked to follow. And if you can understand that, then you'll understand how to add and subtract uh, positive and negative numbers without remembering those rules. You'll understand it from a very conceptual uh, understanding as well. Okay, so let us talk a little bit about what this means. 6 minus 2. 6 minus 2. Well, what does that mean? It means that we're going to start at 6 on the number line. So the first number means start at that number. Uh, then the, the sign tells you what direction to go. Then we're going to go to the, if it's negative, you're going to go to the left. And if you're uh, positive, then you're going to go to the right. Okay? So we're going to start at 6. We're going to go to the left for 2. So let's use our number line to illustrate that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so we're starting at six. And we're going to go to the left two whole numbers. One, two. And that gets us at four. That's why six minus two is four. All right? Let's talk about another example. We have 3 minus 3. I'm sure a lot of you are understanding that the answer is 0, but I want us to understand this from a conceptual standpoint, so let's do it out on the number line. All right, the problem asks us to start at 3, so we're going to start at 3, and go to the left, okay? For 3. Remember, subtraction means to count to the left. Addition means to count to the right. So we're going to count to the left three whole numbers. So we're starting at 3, and we're going to the left for 3. 1, 2, 3. That puts us at 0. So 3 minus 3 is 0. Now this is a really, really important mathematical uh, property that exists in math. So the rule says that if you, if you add a number to its opposite, so 3, the opposite of 3 on the number line, so it, it isn't 3 to the right, it's 3 to the left. So we have negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. So the opposite here is negative 3. The opposite of 2 is negative 2. The opposite of 1 is negative 1. The opposite of negative 1 is 1. The opposite of negative 2 is 2. The opposite of negative 3 is 3. So I just wanted to show you that so you knew what opposites meant. Uh, it means start at 3 and uh, go to the left 3. So if you add a number to its opposite, you'll always get 0. That's what we call the identity, uh, sorry, the inverse property of addition. Of addition. Uh, if, you're at, if you're ever asked what's the additive inverse of 3, it just means what's the opposite of 3. So it's negative 3. What's the additive inverse of negative 3? It's 3. Okay? All right. So if I were asked to go to the left any more after 3 than 3, so I'm starting at 3. I want to go to the left for 3. But if I were to ask to, be, to go any more than 3, I'd end up with in the negative section of the number line. So therefore, my answer would be negative. So I want you to understand this concept. Because if you understand this, it's going to help you really 
um, when we get into the problems throughout this uh, presentation. All right, let's get into some examples. All right, so we have 6 minus 2. Again, these are just directions. It means start at 6, so let's draw 6. 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It means start at 6 and go to the left. Remember, subtraction means to count in the opposite direction. Um, 2, so let's count to the left 2. 1, 2. And that's why 6 minus 2 is 4, because I landed on 4 on the number line. Okay? Uh, let's just go over this really quickly. Uh, if I were being asked to start at 6 and go to the left 6, I'd get to 0. But I'm not being asked that. I'm being asked to go to the left a little bit less than that. So that's why the answer is to the right of 0, and that's why the answer is positive. Okay? All right, let's go on. Negative 2 plus 6. So let's start... Let's put a zero there. We have negative one, negative two, negative three. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so let's start at negative two. Start here, start at negative two. And I want to go to the right for six, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. And the answer is four. So the answer is 4, because if the problem asked me to go to the right for 2, I'd end up at 0. But it wants me to go 4 more than that, which is to the right. That's why the answer is positive 4. Okay? Let us go on to the next problem. All right. Start at negative 5 and go to the left for 2. Let's do that. Negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, let's go negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. All right, so we're starting at negative 5, and we're going to the left for 2. 1, 2. Puts us at negative 7. Okay. Here, I hope you're starting to see the intuitiveness of, of what these uh, problems actually are asking you to do. All right, 4 plus 3. All right, so let me start at 4 and go to the right for 3. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's start at 4 and go to the right for 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And that's why the answer is 7. Okay? Uh, the reason why it's 7 is because I'm starting at 4, which is already to the right of 0, so it's positive. And I want to go 3 more than that. So 3 more to the right, 3 to the right. And more than means to the right, less than means to the left. Okay? All right, let's go to the next problem. We have negative 3, so we're starting at negative 3. Two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. We have negative four, negative five, negative six. All right. Let's see what this means. It says start at negative three, but then it says go to the left. No, go to the right. It's eleven o'clock. Okay. And the way that you can think about that. My computer just went off and told me the time. Thank you, Apple. <laughs> um, so, I mean, start at negative 3 and go to the left. No, go to the right twice. So the opposite of the opposite, that's all it means. Opposite of the opposite will always give you the positive. Okay? That's what this means here. So there are a couple ways of thinking about it. Go to the left. No, go to the right. Just go in the opposite of whatever it says. Go to the left. No, go to the right. Or you can think that the opposite of the opposite is a positive. All right. Or you can think about it from the number. Start at 2. No, it's the opposite of that, which is negative 2. No, it's the opposite of that, which is 2 again. So it's positive 2. So there are three different ways to think about this. All right. So we're going to the right for 2. That's what this means. Start at 3 and go to the right 2. 1, 
2. Okay? If the problem told me to go to the right for 3, I'd end up at 0. But it told me to go to the right for 2. So therefore, I'm still in negative territory. And the answer was negative 1. All right, we have one more problem to go. We have negative 1. Start at negative 1. And go to the right. No, go to the left for 2. That's what this means. So if you go to the left, it means it's a negative, right? Negative 2. So start at negative 1 and go to the left 2. 1, 2. So the answer is negative 3. Okay? As you're starting to see here, I hope you notice a pattern. If you are going in the same direction um, both times, then all you're doing is just adding up the the lengths. You're adding up a length of 1 and a length of 2. That's a length of 3 going in, going in 3 uh, spaces to the left. So that's why it's negative 3. And we have one more. 0 minus 5. Let's start at 0 and let's go to the left for 5. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So the answer is negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So this also illustrates another example called the identity property of addition. And that means if you add 0 to any number, you're going to end up at that same number. So it means that I could also have negative 5 plus 0. That's what this statement also means. I'm just changing the order in which these are written. A lot of your teachers have told you, and I've been told when I was a kid, um, that you can never add, um, you can never use the commutative property for subtraction. You can. Uh, if you understand what subtraction actually means. It means to add the opposite. So all you're doing is changing the order in which is, this is written. This is, uh, this is a negative 5 and this is a 0. And you're always adding numbers um, unless you're multiplying or dividing. So I'm starting at negative 5 and I'm adding 0. Well, it means I'm going to the right, no spaces. So I'm staying right at negative 5. That's why it's negative 5. All right. Now that you've seen this on a more intuitive level, we're going to take the intuition that we've gained um, from our examples and apply them to problems where we're not going to use the number line, but we're going to use some uh, concept that we learned throughout this presentation. So this means start at negative 17. So I'm already to the left of 0 and go to the right 83 okay now if I start at negative 17 and I go to the right for 17 then I'm ending up at 0 but this tells me to go more than that so therefore I'm going to be in the positive side so the answer is gonna be positive but let me take 17 away from 83 so I'm finding the difference of this I'm going in different directions, so I'm going to have to find the difference. Even though I said we weren't going to remember rules, these are some intuit intuitive things that help us. All right, let us subtract. 6 and 6. So the answer is positive 66. Okay? And if we're using the commutative property, we could say that this is a negative 17 and this is a positive 83. Well, let me take a positive 83 and just change the order in which I'm going to uh, have these numbers appear, and I'm adding a negative 17. So this is also 83 minus 17. All right, next, we have 27, starting at 27, and going to the left, no going to the right for 34. So I'm starting at 27, which is already positive, but I'm going to the right of that, 34 more. So um, I'm just going to continue going in the direction of positive. So my answer will be positive. And I have 27. I'm putting that together with a length of 34. And I get an answer of 61. So the answer is positive 61. Sometimes you don't have to write the positive sign in front of a positive number. You'll just assume that it's that. 